In this presentation, we're going to look at the characteristics of broadcast news writing. Use a conversational tone. It's less formal than print reporting. Imagine telling your neighbor a story over the fence, or you're telling the day's news at the dinner table. Don't use slang. Avoid it as much as possible. Avoid confusing the audience with flowery, non-conversational copy. No one's going to be impressed if you can use such language. Use contractions such as, it's going to be a long time, or there aren't many things he won't tell you about. Use short declarative sentences. Don't use complex sentences. Keep the subject and verb as close to each other as possible. For example, police arrested a suspect this morning. In a story, present a few well-developed facts as opposed to lots of little bits of information, which can be confusing to the listener or the viewer. Make it active voice. Active voice is the only way to go. Active voice is someone doing something. Passive voice is something being done to someone or something. Active voice, for example, the president gave a speech. Passive version, a speech was given by the president. Passive, around the metro area, bed bugs are biting. Active, bed bugs bite around the metro area. Another passive example, the gunman has been arrested. The active version, police arrested the gunman. Active voice is more conversational and shorter, as you can see, fewer words. Do's and don'ts, a tense situation, if you will. Use present tense whenever possible, but there is a difference between present tense and the active voice. Do this. The World War II vet remembers the battle like it happened today. Don't do this. The battle flamed around the World War II vet this morning in his memory. See how that uses more words and it's more cumbersome. Avoid using more than one tense in the same sentence. For example, don't say police arrest a Carville man and charged him with arson. Do say a Carville man is in jail tonight charged with arson. More do's and don'ts for days, names, and titles. Use the words yesterday and tomorrow if the event in question is only one day in the past or future. Except on first reference or when one person with the same name is part of the story, use the last name only. For example, you have a story where police look for John Smith. That's the first reference in the story. After that, you can refer to Smith was last seen in a getaway car. It's okay to use the first name of a child more than once. It has more personality to the story. I'm sure you've heard this before. Johnny Miller has been gone for two days now. After that, you can say, Little Johnny was last seen by his parents, etc. When you use a title, place it in front of the name. For example, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. After that, you can refer to her as Governor Whitmer. Here's some anchor help that you should provide when you're a news writer. The strange names that you encounter, write them out phonetically. For example, you have somebody who's a foreign minister in Azerbaijan, and he has a real weird name. Try to avoid that, or if you do, write out his name so that the anchor can't pronounce it. Do it phonetically. Uh, avoid foreign names as much as possible. Now, it's first or second reference of somebody who's the foreign minister in Kazakhstan. Then you would try to avoid it, but if he's in the news a lot, you can't get around it. You're going to have to identify that person and write his name out phonetically. Learn different pronunciations of local landmarks and spell them out phonetically if necessary. For example, in Michigan, there's a town called Augre, and it's spelled A-U-G-R-E-S. A lot of people on first encounter that word would say Augress, but actually it's pronounced A-W-G-R-A-Y, Augre. Abbreviations are to be avoided as much as possible. Be careful with acronyms, and when you do, use them in place of hyphens. For example, you have SOCOM, which stands for Save Our Cumberland Mountains. Continuing with helping an anchor out, keep hyphenated words on the same line. That makes it easier for the anchor to read in the teleprompter. Don't use symbols. Write them out. The numbers rules. For example, 1 through 9, write the word. 10 through 999 use numerals. For example, 875, you'd write the numerals, 875. Higher than 999, use a combination of words and numerals. Write out phone numbers and years using all numbers. General dues, write like people talk to a degree. Try to avoid slang. Make life easy for the anchor. As a good writer, you do that. Be clear and concise when you're writing news stories. Be careful with pronouns and attribute as much as possible. 
when someone is quoted, you attribute who that person is, not a government source. General don'ts. Don't depend on the computer to catch mistakes. Don't forget that you know more about stories than audience members do. You are the one that is writing or telling the story. Don't fail to make corrections on the prompter as well as on hard copy, because when there are mistakes on the prompter, the anchor is going to read it. There's no doubt about it. So avoid that by making corrections whenever possible. Selecting stories and starting to write. Newsworthiness is a highly subjective matter. That means what could be a number one story in one newsroom could be something completely different in another newsroom. It's all subjective. Proximity. If it's local, it's probably going to make the newscast. If it's a big fire that happened in Flint, you know it's going to be in the local newscast. Timeliness. If it happened in the morning, it might not be used at 11 p.m. For example, there was a big traffic accident tying up the commute in the morning. It got all cleaned up by the time 11 o'clock comes around. And if no one got hurt, they're not going to bother to include that in the newscast unless there was a one or two hour delay, and then they might decide to do that. Impact. If a story has an impact on the greatest number of viewers or listeners, it's going to probably lead the newscast. And usually that is weather because weather impacts everyone. If we're going to have severe weather, that's probably going to lead the newscast. Prominence. Joe Blow, the store clerk, pulled over for a regular DUI. So what? The governor stopped over for a DUI. It's a big deal because everybody knows the governor. Usually not too many people know Joe Blow. Conflict. Showing conflict simply for the sake of showing it isn't good decision making. If you have two guys just duking it out in the middle of the street, unless they are tying up traffic and unless somebody is severely injured, Usually, it's not worth putting in the newscast. Unusual or human interest stories. The average people who do unusual things. For example, a magazine cover collector. That's something you don't normally see, like somebody who collects all the Sports Illustrated covers for the past 50 years, as we see a picture of the greatest Detroit Lion of all time. Parking tickets. It's no big deal if someone has a few but what if someone has hundreds? That is interesting. And if they are, well, dumb enough to talk to you, could make a good story. Most people would not do that. Keep it simple. Relate difficult concepts to common things, such as slicing a loaf of bread as dividing up a school budget. You could do that in a stand-up. Good video and natural sound. Now, this is something I'm going to be mentioning many times during the course of the semester. Let nat sound, which is short for natural sound, Breathe life into a story. For example, if you were to show a bagpiper at the beginning of a story and you didn't hear the bagpipes, that wouldn't be very effective, would it? Write to the video. If you're doing a story about the bagpiper and a whole bunch of bagpipers at a big festival, you write to the story, the script that you are doing about the bagpipers. What are viewers, listeners talking about? The weather. Everybody talks about the weather. Celebrities about to make an appearance. Say, for example, J-Lo is going to be visiting Flint tomorrow. People will be talking about that. A big crime story. Say, for example, a bank was robbed and thousands of dollars was taken in the robbery. That would be a big story. Usually what people in the newsroom are talking about is going to be a big story. Story selection. News philosophy. It's a set of values the station uses to emphasize some types of stories over others. Some stations like might emphasize being hard-nosed, asking the tough questions at Channel 5, for example. Others might emphasize investigative reporting. Most just cover car crashes, fires, chases, government news, etc. Learn about a station's news philosophy before taking a job there. It could help you land a job or prevent you from taking a position in a newsroom that conflicts with your personal values. Basics to story writing, the five W's, if you will. Who, what, when, where, why. Once again, who, what, when, where, why. Don't forget H, that stands for how. S stands for so what. The page F, test for scripts. P are the words precise. A, is the story accurate? G, is every element germane? Does it really pertain to the story? E, are all actors treated equitably, or equal, if you will? 
F, does the story flow? Does it move from one point to the other in a way that's understandable? Writing do's and don'ts, do think like a listener or viewer. Don't let your own biases come into play. The way you feel about a story should not be germane. It should not be in the story. It's just the information people need to know. Do utilize the page F test, as we saw in the previous slide. Don't let the entertainment part supersede the information part. People need to know the information, not just the entertainment angle. Do decide what the story is about before you start writing it. If you don't know what it's about, how can your listener or viewer know what it's about? Don't disregard the need for strong grammar and word precision skills.